Even when we're boneheads. <laughs> oh, yes. Would you turn to Psalm 127 for a moment, please? This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice because we have a choice. The great thing that we are created of the image of the Lord is because of free will. Unfortunately, many times it's misused. A free will being misused. That's why in Psalm 127 and verse 1 it says what? Unless the Lord builds the what? The house, the temple. They labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. In other words, not only what he builds, he watches over. So what we build... We watch over, and what he builds, he watches over. Amen? Not that he doesn't use man to build his house, amen, but we use eternal tools to build his house, not temporary tools. So there's a difference between eternal and temporary, isn't there? Wouldn't you want something to last forever? I mean, you know, we don't want sickness to last forever, amen? That's temporary. So the only way to remove something with temporary is to replace it with eternal. So what we're doing is temporary things are in the area of what we live in in this realm. It's temporary, isn't it? Everything, look at each other. You say you're temporary. But your, your spirit is eternal, isn't it? But your flesh is temporary. Thank God we can get rid of this thing. Sheesh kebab. Got to drag this piece of flesh around all the time. Gets nothing but in our way, doesn't it? You look in the mirror and you go, ah! Then you can say, you're temporary. <laughs> I ain't got to look like this forever. <laughs> Hallelujah. So unless the Lord builds the house... We labor in vain, so it's so important that what God builds, he watches over. Does everybody get that? And it's amazing how many times when we build, we got to watch over it. Amen? In Psalm 147, in verse 2, what does it say? It says, the what? The Lord builds up Jerusalem, and he what? Gathers together the what? Outcasts of Israel. See, th this is so profound because when he's building things, he builds up. He's building something to gather outcasts. How many of y'all know we're all outcasts? So he's building a place to bring in outcasts. Amen? <laughs> it says he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He counts the number of the stars and he calls them all by name. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding is what? infinite the lord lifts up the humble he casts the wicked down to the ground sing to the lord with thanksgiving sing praise on the harp to our god he covers the heavens with clouds he prepares rain for the earth he makes grass to grow on the mountains he gives to the beast its food and to the young ravens that cry he does not delight in the strength of horse he takes no pleasure in the legs of man the Lord takes pleasure in those who what? Fear him. And those who hope in his mercy. In other words, he looks for those who are humbled and whose hope is in them. So no matter what you're going through, in other words, the enemy's always going to try to get me and you to try to build. To build with temporary things. So many times we wait on God and, and, and he hasn't showed up yet. We're waiting on them to do something. And many times, many people move out of position and begin to build. And then God's not watching over it, is he? And then it crumbles, doesn't it? Amen? Now, there's times when God will use something temporary in the temporary realm to build, 
to help build something eternally. Does everybody understand that? But it must be led by the Lord, not by man. It can't be built by frustration, anxiety, stress, or worry, or fear. The only thing it's built on is the reverence and honor, fear of the Lord. When we build on things that are fear of the Lord, it's different. Because then we know the building blocks, the, all the materials, all the tools and everything is brought to me and you by him. And he's the one that's watching over the building. And it's, given, and it's done by his wisdom, not ours. It's done by the wisdom, not from the temporary realm, but from the what? Eternal realm. Amen? It's from above and not from beneath. In Psalm 91, what's the first couple of verses? It says, he who what? Dwells. Dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my what? My refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I will trust. In other words, what God is building is he's building not only a habitation, but a refuge for his people. And that's what you and I do. We're building a habitation for his presence and a refuge for his people. That's what's being built right now. It says, surely he shall deliver you. I will say to the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I will trust. Surely he will deliver you from the snare of the fallow and from the prevalence of pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings he'll take what? Refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. In other words, what God is building is a place of refuge. Does everybody understand it? But what's he doing? He's gathering the outcasts to bring them in. When he brings them in, then he begins to work with us. He brings you into his place. Then he begins to build a place for his habitation in us. Does everybody get it? Praise God. Go to Genesis 6. How many of y'all know God's still building? Well, I want you to know something that's kind of pretty wild. He is building something right now. I want to call it the Ark of Departure. He's building a place where he's gathering everyone to remove them. And there are those who are already in it and those who are preparing to get in it. In Genesis 6 and verse 13. Would you read it with me? And God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me. For the earth is filled with what? Is the earth becoming more and more filled with violence? Yes. Amen. There's more violence on the earth than there has been since the fallen angels ruled it. For the earth is filled with violence and through them and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make yourself a what? Ark of gopher wood. Make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and out with pitch. And this is how you shall make it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits. It's with 50 cubits and its height 30 cubits you shall make a window for the ark and you shall finish it to a cubit from above and set the door of the ark in its side you shall make its lower second and third decks so there's going to be three levels how many levels are there how many chambers are there in the tabernacle three i want you to just begin to look at the parallel of the ark and the tabernacle the ark was the temporary rescue. The tabernacle is the eternal rescue. Amen? Let's go a little further. In verse 17, And behold, I myself am bringing flood waters on the earth to destroy from heaven 
<clears throat> from under heaven all flesh in which is the breath of life. Everything that is on the earth shall die. But I will establish my what? Covenant with you and you shall go into the ark. Only those that are covenant keepers have access to the ark. It's like a private key that's given to you that you have access to the ark because you are a covenant keeper. Amen? But I will establish my covenant with you, you, and you shall go into the ark, you, your sons, and your wife, and your sons' wives with you. And every living thing of, the flat, of all flesh that you shall bring two of every sort into the ark to keep them alive with you, they shall be male and female. Of the birds after their kind and all the animals and so forth. And verse 21, and you shall take for yourself of all food that is eaten, and you shall gather it for yourself, and it shall be food for you and for them. So we see that in this, again, what God is building right now is an is the ark of departure. He is gathering everywhere and everyone. It says that the earth was filled with violence, which is known as sin, and this violence was against the laws of God. It is violent to, be, to go against the laws of God. Now, gopher, word, uh, gopher wood is considered a, a family of wood, which is like um, cypress and cedar. Pitch is a substance that is used to waterproof or seal or protect. In other words, if you begin to look at the ark, it's actually a representation of a sign of salvation that would be coming. Because didn't the ark rescue? It was a sign of salvage. They salvaged no one is sons, didn't they? Didn't the Lord? And so the ark was known as a place of salvation. The, the pitch was known as the covering or atonement. So that those would, is Jesus' representation of a price that he would pay for me and you. Why? Because what were the waters? That was the waters of judgment, wasn't it? So you see that the waters of judgment that was hitting this ark, everybody around was mocking God. They were about their own business. They were violent. They were in fornication. There was uh, perversion, all kinds of things that was going on. There was no respect and honor to the Lord. The fear of the Lord had departed. And God said, I'm going to kill everyone. It'll be my wrath. But I'm going to set a salvage, salvage place where those will be salvaged that I sent in there because I'm, I'm going to pay the atonement for them. Amen? Amen? And again, the, the ark had three levels in, in 1 Kings chapter 6. And aren't we made of three parts, spirit, soul, and body, right? In 1 Kings chapter 6. In verse 11. Now Solomon was building a temple. Another place of refuge. In verse 11, the Lord, when the word of the Lord came to Solomon saying, concerning this temple which you are building, if you walk in my statutes, execute my judgments, and keep all my commandments and walk in them, then I will perform my word with you which I spoke to your father David. So see, there is something that how you receive inheritance from God. So if you're out of order, can you receive it? No. No. You know, people get, there's many prophecies that people have prophesied and said these things are going to come to pass. But listen, it doesn't come to pass until that person starts to get in order. Because God will not fulfill anything that's out of his will. Amen. And I will dwell among the children of Israel and I will not forsake my people Israel. So Solomon built the temple and finished it. And he built the inside walls of the temple with what? Cedar boards from the floor of the temple to the ceiling. He paneled the inside with wood. He covered the floor of the temple with what? Planks of what? Cypress. See, so the same building materials that was used to build the ark was also used to build the temple. Then he built the uh, 20 cubic room at the rear of the temple from the floor to the ceiling with the cedar boards. He built it inside an inner sanctuary as the most holy place, which is known as the third chamber. And in front of the temple uh, sanctuary was a 40 cubits long 
The inside of the temple was cedar carved with ornamental buds and open flowers. All was cedar. There was no stone to be seen. And he prepared the inner sanctuary inside the temple to set the ark of the covenant of the Lord there. The inner sanctuary was 20 cubits long, 20 cubits wide, and 20 cubits high. He overlaid it with what? Pure gold. Pure gold. And overlaid the altar of cedar. So Solomon overlaid the inside of the temple with pure gold. He's, he stretched gold chains across the front of the inner sanctuary and overlaid it with gold. The whole temple he overlaid with gold until he had finished all the temple. Also, he overlaid with gold the entire altar that was by the inner sanctuary. Inside the inner sanctuary, he made two cherubim of olive wood, each ten cubits high. One wing of the cherub was five cubits. The other wing was of, the cube of the cherub was five cubits. Ten cubits from tip of the wing to the tip of the other. And the other cherub was ten cubits. Both cherub, cherubim were of the same size and shape. The height of one cherub was ten cubits, and so was the other cu uh, cherub. Then he set the cherubim inside the inner room, and they stretched out the wings of the cherubim, so that the wing of one touched one wall, and the wing of the other touched the other wall. And their wings touched each other in the middle of the room. Also, he overlaid the cherubim with what? Gold. Everything was being overlaid with gold. Then he carved all the walls of the temple all around, both the inner and outer sanctuaries, with carved figures of cherubim, palm trees, and open flowers. The floor of the temple he overlaid with gold, both inner and outer sanctuaries. For the entrance of the inner sanctuary, he made doors of olive wood. The lentil and the doorposts were one-fifth of the wall. The two doors were the olive wood, and he carved on them figures of cherubim, palm trees, and open flowers, and overlaid them with gold. He spread gold on the cherubim and on the palm trees. So for the door of the sanctuary, he also made doorposts of olive wood, one-fourth of the wall. And two doors were of cypress wood, two panels comprised one folding door, two panels comprised the other folding door. Then he carved cherubim, palm trees, open flowers on them, and overlaid them with gold, applied evenly on the carved wood. Again, there was three chambers of this temple, of this tabernacle. Solomon's temple, again, was made with the same building blocks as um, the ark, except for one thing. There was gold instead of pitch. In other words, it was overlaid. When you turned, when gold is turned liquid to overlay, it's it's produced by its manufacture by high temperatures very high temperature it must be purified it must be heated must go under pressure somebody get this and and when it's laid and it dries when it's buffed it brings reflection in other words jesus was representing himself in every area as being the one that would pay the price of purification and sanctification for his children by becoming this gold is everybody okay? In John 14. So this gold would be the arena that we would, he would reflect, we would be, he would reflecting himself on us. So people would see us. So see, when God looks at you and me, he looks at his son. He sees his child. The image and likeness of his son. He sees Jesus in me and you. Does everybody get this? Yes, we are specific. We are special. Our characters he's established, but he still sees when you and I are born again, he still sees his children as his son. In other words, he looks at me and you no different than he did at Jesus. If we could hold on to that identity of who we are in Christ. You know, I can't express enough, and it sounds very strange, but after my visitation from the Lord, let me tell you, I was Jesus. I wasn't going around telling everybody I was Jesus. That will lock me up. But I, I, I'm telling you, I was Jesus. It was no longer I that lived, but he that lived. 
everywhere I went for a certain amount of period of time for about the first two or three months after my visitation from the Lord, I was Jesus. I thought like him. I spoke like him. And his presence was just overwhelm me. That's what I always thought spirit-filled was. If that's what spirit-filled is, I ain't been spirit-filled since. In fact, I thought that's what happened to everyone when they accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. You know, they became like Jesus. All right. But even Moses put a bag over his head because <laughs> the glory of God was leaving him after he came out of the presence of God, didn't he? Amen. What a battle it is now, let me tell you. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. In John chapter 14, is everybody there? In verse 1, let's speak it together. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are what? Many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you. I go to what? Prepare a place for you. Hallelujah. Not only is he preparing a permanent place for us, but he's preparing a ark of departure place. It's almost like building a ship that everybody's going to enter into and get out of here. Hallelujah. In verse 3, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. And where I am, there you may be also. Thomas said, Lord, we don't know where you're going. And how can we know the way? And Jesus said what? I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. Those are the three, three train chambers of the tabernacle. So when you enter Christ Jesus, when you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and you enter into his tabernacle, he says, he who abides in me shall live. I will abide in him. So in other words, there is a, well, you don't, we don't see it, but there's an invisible ark right here that we are entering when we enter Christ. Does everybody get it? Because it's an eternal place now. It's not built with man's hands, is it? It's not built by man's hands with an ark. It's not built by, of, a, of a boat. It's not built by man's hands of a temple. It's built by the hands of God Almighty. It is called the Ark of Departure. It's an eternal ark. It's a place of habitation. And it's in Christ now. So when we enter into him and we abide him, but the same rules apply just like he told Solomon. Amen? Because he says, if you abide in me, I'll abide in you. But when you begin to walk your way, you're walking out. Is everybody okay? So Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except for through me. In other words, no one can enter. No one can enter the ark of departure without me. Because he's the what? He's the door. Amen? Let's go to um, Ephesians chapter 2. One of the things that I, I, I what I had seen when the Holy Spirit was revealing is to begin to look at the area of getting as many people into the ark as possible. Because soon this door is going to shut. We need to get as many people in as soon as possible. Oh, hallelujah. See, too many are still building their house. And not his. There's too many busy Busy, 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 busy building their house and not his. In Ephesians chapter 2, is everybody there? See, the enemy loves to get us busy. He likes to keep us busy and distracted. In verse 14. For he himself is our what? He's our peace. Who has made both one 
and he has broken down the middle wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh the enemy that is the law of commandments contained in the ordinances, so as to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making peace that he might reconcile both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off and to those who were near. For through him we both have what? Access by one spirit to the Father. Now therefore you are no longer what? Strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Having been built... On the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building being fitted together does what? Grows into a what? A holy temple where? In the Lord. In whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God where? In the Spirit. Does everybody understand that? It's in the what? Spirit. In Matthew 22. Everybody there? Start at verse 1, please. And Jesus answered and spoke to them again by parables and said what? The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son. And sent out his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding. And they were not willing to come. Again, he sent out other servants saying, tell those who are invited. See, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen, fatted cattle are killed and all things are ready. Come to the wedding. But they made what? Light of it. And went their ways. One to his what? Own farm. Another to his what? own business and the rest seized his servants treated them spitefully and what killed them those were known as the prophets but when the king heard about it he was furious and he sent out his armies destroyed those murders and burned up their city and he said to his servants the wedding is ready but those who were invited were not worthy therefore go into the highways, and as many as you find, invite to the wedding. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all whom they had found, both bad and good. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he saw a man there who did not have on wedding garments. Those were known as righteous garments. So he said to him, friend, he didn't call him brother or son. In fact, he said, friend to Judas. <laughs> and he said to him, friend, how did you come in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. And the king said to the servants, bind him hand and foot, take him away, and cast him into what? Outer darkness. And there he will be what? Weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, that word called means invited. There are many who are invited, but few are chosen. Many invited, but few are chosen. Into what? They're invited into the what? Wedding or into the ark of departure. Does everybody get this? So right now we're in the highways, we're in the byways. We're, what's he doing? He's gathering people in Christ. Right now, it's happening, and there's got to be more gathering. You know, think about this, that, you know, people are like, well, man, uh, are things going to get worse? Yes. Did things get worse when God told Noah to build an ark? It was terrible. It was terrible. Well, things are going to get worse. Because right now there's an ark that the door is open. And we're going to be out there gathering as many as we can to get in before that door shuts. 
In Matthew 7. In verse 13, what does it say? Enter by the what? Narrow, narrow gate, and which means narrow door. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to what? Destruction. And there are many who what? Go in by it. There's many. Yeah, you probably, you know, every one of us knows many people that have backslidden and gone. Everyone in this room knows somebody that was with the Lord and is no longer with the Lord anymore. Amen? Because narrow is the gate and difficult is a way which leads to life and there are few who find it. What is the price we must pay? Anybody remember? Cooperation. That is the price to pay is cooperation. Without cooperation, you can't enter and without cooperation, you don't maintain. God doesn't kick you out of the ark. People leave the ark. Although he did throw one guy out, didn't he? Because he had the wrong garments on. <laughs> Verse 15, what does it say? Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are what? Ra ra ravenous wolves. You will know them by their what? Fruits. Do men gather grapes from the thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree, listen, this, you're not determining someone on what they say. Does everybody get it? You determine how they live. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you shall know them. Not everyone who what? Says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who what? Does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have, I, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonderful works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me. You practice lawlessness. How many of y'all know God knows what people are doing behind closed doors? Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to be a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. And what does the rock represent? Jesus. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and what? Does not do them. In other words, you may know truth, but if you don't put it into practice, what's, then it's no good. Truth sets people free. There's people that know truth, but they don't put it into, into practice. They don't use it, and they don't stay free. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like in a foolish man who built his house on the sand and the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house and it fell and great was its fall. In John 10. The building is still building. The ark of departure for more people. But everyone has a free will, don't they? John 10 and verse 1. Let's speak it, please. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings, them out, his, brings out his own sheep, he goes before them. And the sheep follow him. They do what? Follow. follow. For they know his 
voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger if they're his sheep. How many know that people can turn from a sheep to a goat? Overnight. They can be a sheep one morning and afternoon, man, they're goaded. <laughs> you know? <laughs> they be kicking in a bucket. <laughs> they snapped. <laughs> You have to by no, by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him. Hello. For they do not know the voice of the strangers. Jesus used this illustration, but they did not understand the things which he spoke to them. Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep, not the goat. All who were ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. That's not pastor. It says pasture. Verse 10. <laughs> the thief does not come except to what? Steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it what? More abundantly. Praise God. So if you know one that knows somebody that got goaded, <laughs> turn them around to get sheeped. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus is the door. Matthew 24. Walk up to some of our brothers and sisters that are out there. Yo, man, you're goaded. You got goaded. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Matthew 24. I was given two definitions this morning. And uh, one I've shared before. An idiot is someone who's spiritually blinded. A moron is someone who knows the truth and doesn't do it. And you're not going to find that in the... Uh, Biblical interpretations of a. <laughs> Does everybody got that? So don't be offended. <laughs> and don't get offended. Amen. So an idiot is someone that's spiritually blinded. A moron is one that knows the truth and chooses to follow it. Every one of us knows someone in that category. Matthew 24 and verse 1. Oh, hallelujah. Then Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came up to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said to him, Do you not see all these things? Assuredly, I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be what? Thrown down. Why? Because it's built with what? Man's hands. And as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us when will these things be and what will be the sign of your coming in the end of the age? Jesus answered and said, Take heed that no one what? Deceives you. No one what? Deceives. Listen, if you, are, if you are maintaining the indwelling oil, you won't be deceived. Has everybody got it? You won't be deceived. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. You will hear wars and rumors of war. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For a nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. Is that happening now? More than ever. All these things that are what? Beginning of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation, and will... Basically kill you or attempt to kill you. And you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow what? Cold. But he who endures to the end will be what? Saved. 
And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations, and then the end will come. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him who is on the housetop not go down to take anything out of his house, and let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babes in those days. And pray that your flight may not be in a winter or the Sabbath. For there will be what? Great tribulations. So there will be the beginning of the sorrows. There will be tribulation and then there will be great tribulation. Such has not been since the beginning of the world until this time. No, nor shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. Then if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ or there, do not believe it. For false Christ and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. See, I've told you these things beforehand. Therefore, if they say to you, look, here in the desert, do not go. Or look, here in the inner rooms, do not believe it. For the, as lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For whoever... For wherever the carcass is, is the, is the eagles will be gathered together. Immediately after the tribulation in those days, the sun will be what? Darkened. And the moon will not be. Now, I want you to grab hold of something here. It says immediately after the what? Tribulation. Now, there's the beginning of the sorrows. There's tribulation and there's what? Great tribulation. So it didn't say immediately after the great tribulation, did it? It said immediately after the what? Tribulation, which will be three and a half years, isn't it? So tribulation is three and a half years and great tribulation is three and a half years. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of heaven will be what? Shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear where? In heaven. Where? Where? In heaven, not in the earth, in heaven, right? You'll, he'll appear up in heaven. And then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven and the, with power and great glory. And he will what? He will send his angels with great, with a what? Great sound of a trumpet. And they will gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of the earth to the other. And I really believe this is the rapture. Because it doesn't say that Jesus did not land on a Mount of Olives, which he's going to. It said they saw him where? In heaven. Then he says, now learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branches have already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. The fig tree is represented of Israel when it becomes a nation, which was a nation in 1948. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it, it is near at the doors. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away until all these things that take place. Now, a generation is approximately 70 years. So if you add a 1948 and 70, gets what? 2018. Only God knows the exact day. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. Verse 36, read it with me. But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of what? Noah. Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in those days before the flood, they were what? Eating and drinking, marrying and giving marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Does everybody get that? So the coming of the Son of Man be means that there has got to be. And the coming of the Son of Man here, the Lord, which they see in heaven, means it's going to be as the days and over where there's violence, tremendous violence. So things are going to get worse. And the Lord's going to appear in heaven. And those who knew him, who are not right and not in the ark, will be left behind. Know that the rapture is the final sign before God's wrath. It is the greatest sign that's going to happen on the earth. The 
the, the other greatest sign was his death on the cross where the whole earth turned dark. Amen? This would be another phenomenal sign. It would be the final sign for mankind to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, though they will have to go through great tribulation. Amen? Why? Because the door will be shut. Just in the days of Noah. Is everybody okay? Oh, hallelujah. Uh, go to Luke 17. And it said a, sump, a trumpet will what? Sound, right? Oh, glory. Luke 17. Is everybody there? Is everybody okay? Ark of departure. In verse 20. Now when he, Jesus, was asked by the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God will come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, he is here or he is there, for indeed the kingdom of God is where? Within us. Then he said to the disciples, the days will come when you will desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you will not see it. And they will say to you, look here and look there, don't go after them or follow them. For as the lightning that flashes out of the one part under heaven shines to the other part of heaven under heaven, so also the Son of Man will be in his day. But first he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. Now, is that happening, happening right now? Now, I want you to know something that it said that the Son of Man would be suffering, right? Well, his, is his body suffering? Yes, are they being persecuted like never before? All over the world. So do you understand the parallels here? For many will... Uh, for the first, he must suffer many things and be what? Rejected by this generation. Is Christians being rejected by this generation more and more and more? Yes. The persecution against Christians is phenomenal. And that nobody's doing anything about it. That's why the body's got to pull out the sword and stand up and fight. Because the world's not going to rescue you or me. They're against us. In verse 26. And as it was in the days of Noah, so also, uh, so also be in the days of the Son of Man. They ate, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until that day that Noah entered the ark and the flood and came and destroyed them all. Likewise, it was also in the days of Lot. They ate, they drank, they bought they sold, they planted, they built. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. And that's all, in other words, it's going to be a combination of the days of Noah and the days of Lot. There will be brimstone. There'll be fire. There'll be meteor showers. There'll be floods. Look at the, do you know, you know, I was, I was watching the news yesterday, and if you look at the Mississippi River, the Mississippi River separates the whole country in half. And it's over flooding all the way. People are, it, it's causing millions of people to become homeless. Why? It's a sign that this country is divided. And a house divided cannot stand. You know, people are wondering, why, why isn't God's judgment on this country? It is. It's been. It's increasing. You know, one of the things about this country has been for many years that it's blessed Israel. It's been the most, the major country that's blessed Israel more than any other country in the world. And that's what's brought blessings to this country. But now we have a government that's, there's a battle in the government that's, Part of it, in fact, from the president and his leaders, they're, they're rejecting Israel. They disrespect Israel. They've announced that this country is not Christian. 
then what are they? Then they're antichrist. Because if they're not Christ, they're what? Antichrist. Does everybody understand that? You're either one or the other. You're either in Christ and you're not. And if you're not in Christ, you're antichrist. Amen? Amen? And likewise, it will also, in 28, be as the days of Lot. They ate, drank, and they bought, they sold, they built, they planted, they married. Well, look at same-sex marriage and everything else. Even so, it will be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day, he who is on the housetop and his goods are in the house, let him not come down. Likewise, one who is in the field, and let him not turn back. Remember Lot's wife. What did she do? She turned back. Amen. Well, you know why? Because she was more concerned about her materialism. Whoever seeks to save his life will what? Lose it. And whoever loses his life will preserve it. I tell you, in that night there will be two men in one bed. One will be taken and the other one will be left. Two women will be grinding together. One will be taken and the other left. Two men will be in the field. One will be taken and one will be left. And they answered and said to him, Where, Lord? So he said to them, Wherever the body is, there the eagles will be gathered together. In other words, there's going to be a lot of death. A lot of destruction. And we are in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. In other words, the days of Lot. And we are in the days of Noah. Things are getting worse. So we can't be distracted. We can't lose focus. We can't be so concerned about building our own house. We must use the eternal tools to build. Amen? Why? Because what are we doing? We're actually expanding the ark to get more people in. Matthew 25. Oh, hallelujah. In verse 1, we've heard this plenty of times. It's about the indwelling oil. And the kingdom of heaven shall be like in ten virgins who took their lamps and went out and met the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five foolish. And again, these virgins are believers. Those who were foolish took their oils and took, took their lamps and took no oil with them. In other words, they had lack. They lacked, didn't they? They lacked God's presence. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. Why? Because the wise maintained staying filled with the oil. They had reserves. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they also slumbered and slept. And at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all the virgins arose, trimmed their lamps, and the foolish took said to the wise, give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, no, lest there shall not be enough for us and you, but you go rather to those who sell and buy your own yourselves. In other words, you can't not use someone else's oil. You can't purchase from another person. You must purchase your own oil. And the purchase of your oil there's a price, and that price is called cooperation, isn't it? That's why it's important to gather and get praise and worship and get filled with oil. In verse 10, And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready, those who were what? Ready. In other words, we're on ready, man. If you always keep before, of course, number one, if you keep the Lord before you, there's a relationship. If he's before you in everything you do. There's an area that, that we must always be ready now. Right now. In other words, you always check. Am I ready to meet the Lord right now? Is, is my house in order to meet the Lord right now? Am I right with God right now? Is he pleased with what I'm doing right now? That's the now ready. Amen? And, and that's, that's vitally important. 
to always keep in the now ready. That's where we self-examine. We check ourselves. See, because if you're not keeping in the now ready and you're looking to get ready, is everybody with me? Then you're out of position. Then you're not, things aren't right. You don't look to get ready. You must be ready now. Well, I'll get ready. You know, I, I'm, I'm going to get things right. Now, can God trust someone that says, I'm going to get things right? Or trust someone that says, I'm ready now. See, if you stay in the now ready, everything falls into place. Does everybody get it? Everything will fall into place if you stay in it. Once you move out of the now ready, man, things start to crumble. There starts to get cracks in the foundation. Well, yeah, distractions come. Busyness comes. And then you begin to build on the wrong thing. Amen? Is everybody okay? Now, let's finish this. It says in verse 10 again, And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was what? Shut. Shut. The door was what? Shut. Shut. The door. He says, I am the door. In other words, he shut himself from them. Afterward, the other virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said to them, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch. In other words, be ready. Therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming for you. 1 Thessalonians, uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Ark of Departure. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Start at verse 1. <clears throat> Would you read it with me? Now, concern, now brethren concerning the what? Coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him. We ask you. Do not be soon shaken in mind or troubled either by spirit or by word or by letter. As this from us as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. Is the falling away in place? Oh my goodness, yes. The next thing that's going to happen, the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. And who is that? The Antichrist. Who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped. So that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things and now you know what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. The he is the body of Christ. Whose body is it? Christ. Amen? So right now, our presence, which is his presence, is what's restraining. Once we are removed, once we are taken out of the way, all hell is going to break out big time. There'll be nothing to restrain evil anymore for three and a half years. And then the lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord eventually will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to who? The working of who? Come on, read it with me. Satan. Does everybody see that? Satan. The adversary. With all power, signs and what? Lying wonders. Many are going to be deceived. And with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved, they refused to enter the ark of departure. 
And for this reason, God will send them strong illusion that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but they had pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through the sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth, to which he called you by our gospel for the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you were taught, either by word or by our epistle. And now may, now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God the Father who has loved us and given us everlasting consolation and good hope by grace comfort your hearts and establish you in every good work and word. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Because here it is. This is it. Make no mistake about it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is it, man. You ready? Verse 13. Do not be an idiot. Oh. Do not be a moron. <laughs> Do not be what? Ignorant. Brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have what? No hope. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep or they're alive in heaven. Amen? For the Lord himself will what? Descend from heaven with a what? Shout with a voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God. And he's going to gather, isn't he? And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be what? Caught up together. Caught up, that word caught up is associated with rapture. We shall be caught up together with them where? In the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we will always be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words. Now I'm going to close at Psalm 15. Because this is important. Ark of Departure. You know, this is the next event that's going to happen. It's going to be the next fulfillment of the Feast of the Lord. There are seven Feasts of the Lord. He's already fulfilled the first four. The fifth one will be fulfilled with the Feast of Trumpet, which is the blowing of the trumpet. Amen? And that's for he will descend the clouds in the air and he will gather his children. Those who are coming with him, who are with him right now, why, what's the purpose of that? Because of the other parts of redemption. In other words, we will have glorified bodies. The final redemption for us is to get a new body. Woohoo! Now let's get qualified because Psalm 15 is the qualification. Would you read it with me? Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle? Who may abide in the ark of departure? Or who may dwell in your holy hill? He who walks what? Uprightly. Who works righteousness and speaks the truth in his heart. He who does not backbite with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friend, and whose eyes a vile person is despised. In other words, he doesn't hang around with those whose hearts aren't right. But he honors those who what? Fear the Lord in reverence and honor and respect. He who swears to his own hurt and does not change. He who does not put out his money at usury. In other words, manipulation. Nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be moved out of position to enter the ark. This is the qualification. So we need to be ready. If you stay in the ready position... You're in good hands. <laughs> the eternal insurance of Jesus Christ. 
<laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We have that the seed that's been imparted in us be protected and grow and bear fruit for your glory and that it, you would bring to remembrance that we may, through your presence, through your word, through your love, draw people to enter your ark as they accept the invitation for the eternal departure that's coming. Lord, help us to stand strong and bold and use our sword to cut loose those who've been taken captive and to rescue them into your ark. Jesus, we are honored and blessed to know such truth and such mysteries that we can declare them to your people. We promise to give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.